This is an example of a stationary time series, specifically a strictly stationary time series that consists of just flipping a coin every minute. So the sampling frequency is by minute. And we just flip a coin and we'll code a heads as one and a tails as zero. So if you imagine you know, the time series starts somewhere over here, t equals one, two, but imagine we just jump right into the middle and we have some y sub t, we're not even, we don't know what t is, it's just some number. Now we think about what's the probability distribution of that y sub t well, it's equal to one or zero, each with one half probability, right? We have probability y t, so heads or tails, both one half probability. And we can ask ourselves, does it matter that this was the 700th coin flip or the 200th coin flip? And the answer is no. Whichever coin flip it was, uh, they're all independent uh, and they all have one half probability of heads or tails. We're assuming it's a fair coin. And we can think also, okay, well what if we uh, had flipped a coin in the minute before that? What about the joint distribution of those two coin flips? Well, again, it doesn't matter whether it's the 700th time or the 200th time or the first time. Uh, that T does not affect our answer. For example, if we want to know what's the probability of getting both heads, so the probability that both uh, the first flip is heads, and the uh, second flip is heads. Well, because of the independence, uh, the joint probability is the product of the marginals. Y. And again, it doesn't matter which flip this is, the t plays no role, so these are both just one half. So we'll get one half times one half, which is one quarter. And by the same logic and intuition, you know, if we had another flip before or a flip after, the t that we're centered on doesn't make any difference in terms of the probabilities or these distributions of these random variables. We can extend this by thinking about defining zt to be the sum of two consecutive flips. But again, if we think about the, does the t matter here? Well, zt depends on yt minus one and yt, and we just argued that the t does not matter for the distribution of yt minus one and yt. So that property translates into zt as well. For example, if we wanted to say what's the probability that zt equals two, well, the only way yt minus one plus yt could equal two is if both are equal to one. So the probability that zt equals two is the same as the probability that both yt minus one and yt came up heads, which is exactly what we just computed. And we saw that indeed that probability is one fourth regardless of t. 
And you can do similar calculations to see that even if we have you know, z t minus 1 and z t, well, that'll just depend on y t minus 2 as well as y t minus 1 and y t. But again, those are stationary. In other words, those distributions don't depend on t, so neither does the joint distribution of z t minus 1 and z t. So in this case, uh, both y t and z t are strictly stationary time series.